I'm back again with the possibility of, yes, being able to talk about this again. Thank God. I really wanted to talk about this again. Hello guys, welcome, or if you've already seen my channel before, welcome back. I am the Philadelphia Whovian, and for this video, we're back talking about Golden Girls again. Hurrah! Yes, yeah, sorry. I was just so happy that somebody watched my previous video on Golden Girls. So after someone watched my previous video on Golden Girls, I was like, okay, somebody watched my previous video on Golden Girls, that means maybe they might watch another one. So, with this one, we're going to do a ranking of the top 10 episodes from series or season 7 of the Golden Girls. And you're thinking, wait a minute, that's the final season of Golden Girls. Yes, it is. I'm going backwards because something tells me y'all expected me to go from season 1 to 7, but I figured I'd surprise and shock you. Yes. I can be unpredictable sometimes. I try. I try. Yes, I do. And also, why am I doing a video on Series 7 or Season 7? Sorry, sometimes I say series when I mean season. It's an old habit that's almost impossible for me to fully kick out. So, yes, why am I doing Season 7 first? Because for me, Season 7, the last season of Golden Girls, is one of the best seasons I've ever seen of a TV sitcom ever. This show was coming to a close, but not because of lack of viewers. Not because of lack of ratings. Oh no, it was simply because one of the actresses wanted to leave the show. B. Arthur, who played Dorothy, she wanted to go on and do other things. So the show's ending because the, one of the cast members is leaving. As a result, what do they do? Do the writers say, okay, it's the last season, so we could just do lackluster stories and just get away with anything? No! They said, we're going to do some of the best writing we've ever done in our entire lives. This show was created by Susan Harris and like, headed up by Gail Parent and lots of other creative people. So now, yes, we're going to be going into a show that was awesome up until the last possible moment. So, guys, here's my list of top ten episodes of Season 7 of Golden Girls. And right off the bat, I'm telling all of you guys, okay, with this, literally, with this season, any story can be in the top ten. I, I, it just... Uh, this is where I fell. So guys, if you think, okay, there were all these great stories that were not on the top 10 because I had to narrow it down and because, okay, what do you want from me? It's a perfect season. There were some that I had to not put on my list because it's top 10. I'm sorry. Guys, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. So this is where my emotions fell. So number 10, we have the story of the mother load. And that is when Blanche dates a news anchor and her gorgeousness. Okay, another thing about season 7 is this is Blanche at her absolute most gorgeous. This woman, somehow, she had her seasons where she was better looking than other seasons. But somehow the last season, when she's at her oldest on the show, she looks amazing. And Blanche, she dates a news anchor who is a complete mama's boy. I mean, his mom literally rules over his life to the point where she kind of controls things he eats, how much food he eats, and the idea of, well, she doesn't like it if he literally dates any sort of woman. And Blanche gets in the way of that, and eventually she inspires the guy to stand up to his mother, but it does not lead to good ends for Blanche. And while this is happening, Rose Nyland, she is planning on a roast for this news anchor, and at the same time, Dorothy's ex-husband Stan is back again and trying to get Dorothy to fall in love with him. Lots of fun, lots of mayhem, the comedy is really good. Next one is The Commitments. As number nine, we got The Commitments, and The Commitments is when Dorothy literally is going to go on a blind date, but she cancels it because she gets to go to Beetle Mania. Yeah. Because she's always wanted to see the Beatles. She loves the Beatles. So she goes to Beatle Mania, where bands do covers of Beatles music. And so Blanche agrees to go on the, to, the blind date with the guy that Dorothy was going to go out with. The guy turns out to be a total hottie. But here's the problem. He 
um, kind of listening to some wrong advice because he is a widower and he has not really dated any women since his wife passed away. So he was trying to follow all this advice on what the modern woman wanted about how they want to be equals to men so they do not want men to open doors for them or, you know, you know, pretty much pay for the dinner or pay for the meal, etc. and so forth. And so Blanche had a thoroughly horrible time, even though the guy was a complete hottie. And then he confronts us, he says, oh, I was trying to, you know, do what the modern woman wants. And I love what Blanche says in this. She's, she clears it up very well. Like, seriously, guys, listen to this. This is how, what you do. She said to him, I do, do not, I do not want to be your equal. I want to I want to be treated better than you. That's it. When you are dating someone, guys, when you're dating a girl, really, she wants you to treat her better than how you treat yourself. Same with girls, with guys. They want you to treat them better than how you treat yourself. Same with guys who are dating other guys. They usually want you to treat them better than how you treat yourself same thing with girls dating other girls women you know how we are we want you to treat us better than how you treat yourself i just realized i'm making a massive generalization on the homosexual crowd when i have no right to make any generalizations because i have no authority on what they do i'm sorry about that guys i'll Forget about that. I'll speak from a heterosexual standpoint as a hetero female. We love it when you guys treat us better than how you treat yourselves. That's a good thing. But also, this guy turns out to be remarkably old-fashioned. And he's all about taking romance slow. And Blanche does not know this until the end of the episode. It's very touching. And Dorothy finds out what happens when you let your love of the Beatles be transferred to their fan bands. And she learns in the hard way. It's funny. Then we have number eight. That episode is Where's Charlie? And this one, okay, it's about mainly about how Rose thinks that her de dead husband, yeah, she's a widow, her dead husband, Charlie, if you do not know the show, you do not know Charlie, but Charlie's important to Rose. He's the love of her life, and he's her husband who passed away and left her with little to nothing, but boy, does she love him. So, Rose, she's been in a relationship with a guy named Miles for quite some time, and he gives her a ring to symbolize that she's his girl. And she's happy about this, but then she thinks mistakenly that Charlie gave her a message from beyond the grave saying he does not want her to take this man's ring. Now that's very funny and entertaining in its own way. Especially with Sophia being a thoroughly mean, disgusting person and taking advantage of Rose's stupidity. But what makes this enjoyable is Blanche and the baseball player in this episode. Blanche is dating a baseball player who's like all about getting to the leagues and all that and he's very, he's getting better and better but she's somehow molding and training him. But her desires to train him and mold him to make him a really good baseball player backfire in the most interesting of ways. She tries to get him to discover the, the sensuality of baseball, but she ends up getting him to realize something else about himself that she did not see coming. Yeah. I'm not going to spoil it anymore for you. It's an episode that you got to see. It may not sound funny now. Trust me, it's hilarious in the episode. Then we have a number seven. Goodbye, Mr. Gordon. Okay, it's a teacher from Dorothy's past who she had a major crush on and he took advantage of that. He would literally ask her to do anything for him because he knew she would. Clean his uh, classroom, rotate his tires. She was like a slave to him practically because she was so in love with him. She couldn't see that he was using her. And he comes back and he's doing the same thing again. But she eventually realizes what he's doing. But what makes this episode really funny is that Rose, she works on a show where it's about getting people on you know, show to do like, you know, issues, talk about women's issues. And Rose thinks it's about, you know, women who are roommates and we talk about the female issues on being roommates with other women. No, it turns out it was a show about lesbians, women who live together. Lesbians. And Rose mistook it, so now all these people think that Dorothy and Blanche are lesbians who live together. 
Oh, I, this humor was wonderful. And there's one guy who goes out with Blanche, knowing she's a lesbian, but thinking he can convert her into being hetero. Go and watch that moment. That is one of the best moments ever. Okay, it trust me, it's hilarious. Then we get number six. We get Dateline Miami. This is when Dorothy has a date, so Blanche, Rose, and Sophia talk about their previous experiences on a bad date. And that is one when Rose went on a blind date. Ooh, dear God. And this guy she was on a blind date with, he dated everyone left, right, and center. There's even one funny moment where... It turns out he dated the waiter, which is a guy, and this guy, the actor they got to play this guy, the waiter, was absolutely amazing. Then it's one time where Blanche brings two guys home, and because it's New Year's Eve and she wants to have her New Year's Eve kiss, and the guy that she brought home was once a priest who left the priesthood because he liked women, or he thought about women, but he never had been with a woman before. And what Blanche says when she hears that about how he is a virgin, he's never been with a woman before, and her reply back is priceless. She says, this brings out the artist in me. Oh, it's wonderful. Absolutely wonderful. Now we're at number five. Okay, this is great because this... This season made it easy for me because there were lots of two-parters, so I didn't have to worry about missing out on too many great episodes because the two-parters are amazing. The number five is One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, part one and part two. Okay, these are the final story of Golden Girls. Where Blanche does not want to go um, out to dinner with her rel relative who's coming into town. I believe that's played by Steve Martin. Yeah, that's Steve Martin. Yeah, he was on Golden Girls. So he comes into town, and Blanche tricks them into going out together. She says to Dorothy that Dorothy, that her um, cousin, uncle, whatever he is, um, he was excited to go out with her when it couldn't be further from the truth. He had no desire to go out with her. And he said that, and then she said to her cousin or uncle that, yes, Dorothy wants to go out with you. So she set them up on a date saying to each of them that the other person really wanted to go out with the other person, but they never did. To get back at her, they pretended like they did fall in love on the date and they wanted to get married. And a whole string of comedy happens, but it ends up with them choosing to get married. They do fall in love, and it ends with Dorothy leaving the show and one of the best character exits I've ever seen. And B. Arthur, Rue... Betty and, sorry, Estelle, they give one of the most incredible performances of a last moment of a show. It was absolutely heartfelt, absolutely touching. It was glorious. Then we got number four, another two-parter, A Midwinter's Night's Dream, part one and part two, where Blanche has a party to celebrate and, you know, the winter moon madness of it all. She invites a lot of men to this winter, midwinter's moon madness party. And they do show up, and it's just a lot of men, her, and also Rose, Dorothy, and Sophia. They're all there, and all the men are hitting on all the other women, except for Blanche, even though she still looks, looks very sexy. Then one guy does get interested in her, but it turns out he is a complete thief who's just there to rob her. And also, Dorothy... And Rose's boyfriend, now fiancé, Miles, end up sharing a quick kiss with each other. But then Rose ends up sharing a quick kiss also with the robber who Blanche was falling in love with. And then all throughout this, Sophia is trying to end a curse because there's a curse on their family. And the only way she can end the curse is to kind of destroy the lives of the people around her. Dear God in heaven, it says a midwinter's night's dream and Puck was very much right. This is a romp of a story. It is absolutely wonderful. Then we got number three. Okay, this is not a two-parter, but I love this one. It's the second episode of the season. Sorry, the second episode of the season. And it is The Case of the Libertine Bell. It's when Blanche, she invites all of them to go to this, you know, weekend murder mystery who done a thing where everybody goes to this one place where there's a murder mystery and you gotta solve who commit all the murders. The problem is also Blanche does this because she wants to get a job and she's in competition with another woman to get the job. So she planned this whole thing because this will impress her boss. And 
and maybe if it impresses her boss, she might get the job. Well, they go there, and it turns out it goes from being a fake murder mystery to a real murder mystery, but I won't spoil it for you of if it's real or if it's not. Either way, Dorothy shines in this in every way, shape, or form, and it brings up the level of cruelty all four women are willing to inflict on each other, because Dorothy, Blanche, Rose, and Sophia, they can be cruel towards each other because that's how the comedy happens. And since that's how the comedy happens, sometimes the cruelty is bumped up a notch and it is here. And it's very, very funny. Trust me, it's hilarious. Then number two, we have The Monkey Show, part one and part two, where Stan, Dorothy's ex-husband, is now finally getting over his obsession with Dorothy. At the same time, Dorothy's sister, Sophia's other daughter, comes to stay because she is flat broke. She used to be very rich, very wealthy. Now she has no money whatsoever. But Sophia, which is Dorothy and this girl's mom, uh, Sophia is the empress of pure cruelty or just cold-heartedness. And she... Now that Stan is out of her one daughter's life, she sets him up with the other daughter because according to her, that Dorothy did not need Stan, but rather her sister does because, yeah, she can't do well without money. So you've got a mother setting her daughter's ex-husband up with her other daughter. Oh God. And while it's happening, also... Rose and Blanche are organizing a charity to save the McKinley Lighthouse. And the comedy that happens around that is also incredible. Rose and Blanche are funny. All throughout they're doing that telethon of Save the White House. And all of their desires end up for absolute nothing. Literally, that whole everything happening at the news station when they're doing this um when they're trying to get you know, get this charity run running and all that telethon, it's hilarious. Again, everything that happens there is absolutely funny. And now we have for number one, well, before I do my number one, I'm going to do some honorable mentions. Even though every single episode in this season can get an honorable mention, I narrowed it down. Two, Rose, a portrait of a woman. Also, Room 7. And also, Rose Loves Miles. And also, Questions and Answers, Old Boyfriends, and Ebb Tide 6, Stan's Revenge. Love them all. Now we get down to our number one. My absolute favorite, it is Home Again, Rose. Part one and part two. So yes, Home Again, Rose. Part one and part two. What's that about? It's another two-parter where it's... Rose is feeling a little bit unwell, but then there's an advertisement or the concept of idea of going to family reunions. So Blanche comes up with the idea of, well, they missed out on... Well, at least Rose, because she talks about her family reunion, how she missed out on it. That's a family reunion. I'm sorry. School reunion. Complete blanked out there. School reunion. Rose missed out on her school reunion, but she's also feeling unwell. So Blanche comes up with a genius idea of them going to a random school reunion in Miami and pretending that they were alumni from that school. And they all wear name tags pretending that they're other people. Blanche is the pretty girl who completely ruined so many people's lives. And she did not know she was going to be that woman, so she ends up being blamed for all these things she was not guilty of. Dorothy ends up being the prom queen and being very popular there at the same time. And then Rose, she thought she was right to be a like a Chinese exchange student. Oh, God. And Sophia is pretending to be a Spanish teacher. And it's eventually they all get discovered. But luckily or unluckily, Rose, something happens. She gets, she gets like a heart attack right as they get discovered. So she gets rushed to the hospital. So they're not in trouble. So now they're in the hospital looking after Rose. But it turns out Rose gets completely... Like, you know, the medication goes to her, and she tells them right before she goes under how she's going to be reincarnated because she donated her head to science, where they're going to reanimate her and attach her old head to a new body. And then she's a dream where all she, Blanche, and Dorothy, they all are heads on a table in ice. Only Sophia's around because she tipped the guy before she died. It's pure madness, pure awesome, pure incredibleness, and I love it. This is one of the best, again, best seasons of a sitcom I've ever seen. So guys, do you have a favorite episode from 
Season 7. If you have, let me know in the comment section. Either way, guys, it was awesome just talking to you. Hope to see you again very soon with more talk about Golden Girls. Guys, thank you so much for watching. It's You're awesome. Bye, guys.